YouTubers, welcome back to Eli the Obri Tech. It's gonna be a little quick video based on the effects on low oil. This is a 2000 Toyota Celica with a 1.8 liter engine, the GT version. It has a VVTI. So pretty much the uh, the customer's complaint it was that. So she was telling me that she was hearing like like valve train noises under the hood as you can see at the moment you know they're not really that loud but at the moment you know this noise does get louder and it's due to a pretty much a low oil condition or no oil in the engine i already did the video inspection this this engine pretty much has no oil on it the district's pretty much bone dry another uh condition is that your uh, oil indicator will start flashing inside your dashboard hopefully I'll be, you know i'll be able to catch that for you guys all right guys so hopefully we're able to catch that uh oil indicator warning light on the dashboard which would be around here in this area by the, by the check engine light as you saw right now it flickered So pretty much, you know, if you guys see a oil warning light, that's a pretty much a good indication that your uh, engine is probably low on oil. Or worst case scenario, you might have some uh, oil plumb issue that's not delivering enough uh, oil volume to your engine. Or another will be uh, a lot of wear and tear on the uh, on the engine components, which is not producing enough oil, uh, engine oil. There you go. The oil, you know, the oil indicator came on, it's flickering. So let me go back to the uh, under the hood. All right, guys. So pretty much the symptoms that you will sometimes get with uh, with oil with low oil pressure or low oil on the engine you'll get a p0300 the car did come with the p0300 but i raised the code to see if it would come back the only code that came back so far is a p1315 and a pending p0304 the symptoms with this you know whenever you get an igniter circuit you'll get a, a start and stall condition where the vehicle starts and installs after maybe two, three seconds. So I pretty much came over here to the uh, number four coil and I did a pretty much a wiggle test here on the wires. I cranked the engine over and it started. The, you know, the problem went away. So I'll still come back and see if there's a problem with the wiring. Cause it seemed that someone in the past put a, uh, you see how I, if I move the wire here, the vehicle wants to stall. To the point where it did stall so there's a uh, some type of electrical issue here on, on this connector so I'll, I'll come back and check that out i'm gonna show you guys the uh, the oil level condition right now all right guys so as i remove the oil dipstick this is deceiving it, it shows that there is some type of oil in the in the engine so i'm gonna go ahead and clean it about that I'm gonna put it back in there I'm gonna show you guys this is pretty much bone dry so there you go not even a indication of of oil at least at the tip of the uh, dipstick it's bone dry I'm gonna put it back in there one more time So here we go. No oil. I'm gonna put some oil in there and pretty much show you guys the, the difference. All right. All right guys, so I had about two quarts of oil. You know, just enough to, uh, to make a difference on the sound of the engine. As you can see, the engine is much smoother. There's really no uh, 
rattling noise or any uh, valve train knocking issues. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do a visual inspection on the uh, on the DVT solenoid to see if the, there's any problems to it. Alright guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Based on a low oil condition, which was causing problems on the VVT system on this 2000 Toyota Celica GT with the 1.8 liter engine. Alright guys, so this is Eli WD Tech. Subscribe to Eli. So it's gonna be a little quick bonus video based on this uh, P1315 ignition coil circuit or igniter. So as I remove the uh, the quick splice spade connector here on the red with the yellow wire. I noticed that pretty much it was actually holding the this wire together was actually the insulation. So if I pretty much do a little snug test on it, it's gonna rip as you saw here. So this is why we're getting that P1315 igniter circuit number four. Pretty much here I have my uh my lab scope with the infotech. You will as you can see here on the uh, circuit diagram for this number four shows that number three which is the red yellow is our ignition coil control which goes to the computer this is why we're getting that intermittent problem here the p1315 all right guys so i'm gonna go ahead and fix this up and this problem with the p1315 should go away all right guys